Welcome everyone to my beginner's guide for Mindscape. If you're checking out Mindscape, then you have most likely played some version of RuneScape, whether it was Classic, RS3, Darkscape, or OSRS. The majority of you will already have that basic game knowledge, but this video can still be useful to both veterans and new players because of the different game mechanics and features. So what is Mindscape? Mindscape server is for Java Minecraft, and the world is being built at a ratio of 3 to 1. There is currently only one coder for the game, and his name is the Black Bandit. He is also the owner of Mindscape. The content is based majorly off of OSRS, with a tiny bit of the earlier map resembling RS3. Players can train many skills, complete quests, and participate in both PvE and PvP combat. There are many staff positions and they all play an important role in making the game what it is. The roles are as followed. Owner, Helper, Admin, Moderator, Social Media Rep, Community Rep, Builder, and Modeler. Each staff position has their own in-game badge, which can help players differentiate between the different staff roles. Now that we have gone over a bit of Mindscape and what it is, let's get into content and how to play. There are going to be four sections that we'll go through in this guide. The sections are as followed. Game mechanics, interfaces, combat skills and methods to train them, and lastly, non-combat skills. Movement for Mindscape is done through the WASD keys. You can change what each key does by pressing Escape, Options, and then Controls. Players can change their perspective by pressing F5, giving them three different ways to view the game. To chat with players, you press T to open the chat box and then type whatever it is you want to say. Chatting with players is a good way to make friends and seek in-game help. Shift plus right click while next to a player and looking at them will open up an interface that allows you to interact with a player and see other information. Here you can request a duel, which is only available at the duel arena. Follow them, add as friend, see when they join the game along with their online time, trade, see their current skill levels. In cosmetics you have the following sections, titles, companions, and gravestones. These are all cosmetic items that can be received by opening treasure chests in game. Titles allow the player to have a specific title before or after their player name in chat. Any companion that you have won from the treasure chest can be chosen to follow you around Mindscape via the companion menu. Gravestones are a cosmetic that can make death a bit more fancy by sprucing up your gravestone. In Mindscape there are 8 combat skills and these are Attack, Strength, Defense, Range, Prayer, Magic, Hit Points, and Slayer. Leveling attack lets the player equip higher tier weapons and increase their accuracy against opponents. Leveling strength lets the player equip higher tier strength weapons and increase their max hit against opponents. Leveling defense lets players equip higher tier armors and increases the chance that they will not take damage from an attack. Leveling ranged allows players to use higher tier range weapons, armor, and ammunition. Leveling the magic skill gives players access to higher tiered magic weapons, armor, and a vast selection of spells that can be used for combat, skilling, and teleporting. Leveling prayer gives players access to prayers that can increase damage output, increase resistance to certain combat types, protect items, and more. Leveling hit points increases the amount of health a player has, which in return allows the player to fight longer. The last combat skill is Slayer. Leveling this skill allows players to attack monsters that were previously locked and gives access to equipment that can be bought from Slayer Master Shops. Ruin crafting lets players make various ruins at altars around Gelenor. As you raise your ruin crafting level, you gain access to different altars and therefore gain the ability to craft higher level ruins. For one to craft ruins, you must first complete the quest Ruin Mysteries. With thieving, a player can steal from NPCs, stalls, and whatnot to get money and items. This skill has a massive amount of uses, but at this time there is little content for it. Crafting allows players to make jewelry, range gear, and the strings needed for bows and crossbows. 
The jewelry made using this skill can be enchanted with magic to give players limited teleportation abilities, combat buffs, and more. Training the mining skill allows players to mine ores to use for smithing. As you level this skill you can gain access to higher tier pickaxes, which can help you mine ores faster. When mining you have a small chance of receiving a gem, which can be used for the crafting skill. With the smithing skill, players can use the ores obtained from mining to make armor, weapons, and the materials needed for other skills like crafting and fletching. When training smithing, it is suggested that you mine and bank a decent amount of ore before you start making bars. This will save you a lot of time in the long run. With fishing, players can catch various types of fish, which can then be cooked to use for healing and combat. There are many ways to train fishing, like net fishing, fly fishing, harpooning, and more. I would suggest that you do some early level fishing, that way you don't have to spend money on food when first starting out. Cooking allows players to cook the fish that they have obtained from fishing along with things like pies, breads, etc. etc. As you train cooking, you will eventually stop burning foods. Because of this, it is suggested that you train with lower level, less costly food types until you stop burning the higher level ones like tuna, lobster, swordfish, and shark. This will save you time and money over the long run. The woodcutting skill lets players cut various types of trees like oak, willow, yews, and whatnot. This can be very AFKable and rather profitable at higher levels. As you level this skill, you gain access to better axes, which help you cut trees at a faster rate. You can use the wood received from woodcutting to train fire making. This skill lets players make fires that can be used to cook their food. Other than this, the skill doesn't have any other uses at this point in time. Fletching gives players the ability to make bows, crossbows, and arrows, which can be made using logs received from woodcutting or by buying the logs off the Grand Exchange. With this skill, you can also attach feathers to bolts and arrows to make ammunition for range. Well folks, in this guide we went through the game mechanics, interfaces, combat skills, and non-combat skills. With this, you should have some basic knowledge of Mindscape and how to play. If you have any questions, comment down below or in Mindscape's chat. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Thank you all for watching, and Busy Gamer out!